We made our way through all of the invertebrates. We went into the chordates, the vertebrates, gone through different classes. So we just have one left, and so we're going to talk today uh, about mammals and go over some of their adaptations, some of their characteristics, hitting on some of the categories we've been talking about for each of the groups. So you guys named a bunch of them, and so yeah, you probably are pretty familiar with mammals. Most so their key characteristics, one that no one mentioned, mammary glands. What, are, what is the purpose and function of mammary glands? Huh? Yeah, they're for nursing young. So with the other groups of vertebrates we talked about, for most of them after the young hatch, they're basically independent and on their own. Now some require a little bit of care in the beginning, but pretty quickly they become independent. With mammals, some of them, the young require more care from uh, the parents. And one of those things is mammary glands. So mammary glands are used to produce milk in the female mammals uh, in order to nourish the newborn young. So that's a, a unique adaptation. No other group of animals has mammary. Mammals have the most highly developed brains of any of the vertebrates. They also have the largest brains of any of the vertebrates. Not that that's necessarily a, a sign of intelligence or anything, but uh, highly developed and complex brain is. As you guys said, mammals have hair or fur covering some, all, most, small part of their body. Again, yeah, it's another unique characteristic of mammals. You guys mentioned body temperature. Mammals are warm-blooded. Mammals can live in a huge variety of climates, from extreme cold to extreme heat. Part of the reason is because they are warm-blooded, but they do require a lot of food in order to maintain that high body temperature, high metabolism. What about fertilization? We've been talking about this in each of the groups. Ellie? Yeah. Yeah, they have internal fertilization. So they, the male deposits sperm into the female reproductive tract where it finds the egg, fertilizes it. So that's internal fertilization. What about the development of the young, then, of the embryo? Oh. Close it up. No. No? This is the only group, actually, internal. that has internal development. So after the egg is fertilized inside of the female mammal, it stays inside the body of the female. It grows, it develops from an embryo into a fetus until eventually the female gives birth to live young. So in all of the other groups we've been talking about, that process happens in an egg outside of the body. Mammals are the only group we've talked about that generally have internal development. Now there's some exceptions which we'll talk about. As far as circulation, mammals have a heart similar to a bird's heart with four chambers. What's the, remind me of the benefit of a four chambered heart versus a three and a half or three or two chambered heart? <coughs> See it? Yeah, it keeps oxygenated and deoxygenated blood completely separate. There's no mixing of those two types of blood. Deoxygenated blood can be sent to the lungs to get sort of recharged. Oxygenated blood can then be sent to all the various parts of the body. So the mammals are found in three what we call subclasses. So they're not orders, which we would think is the next group under um, class. These are called subclasses. And the, the first one is very small. There's actually only two living organisms that are in the monotreme 
subclass of mammals. And they are different from all the other mammals. Does anyone know why? Ashley? Yeah, they lay eggs. There are a couple mammal species that actually lay eggs. And they are the monotremes, they're the echidna or spiny anteater, and the duck billed platypus. The duck billed platypus is a unique kind of uh, animal. They have a bill that's sort of duck like. They have some webbed feet. They have a flat tail. Duck-billed platypus are also the only venomous mammal. They have these spurs near their hind legs that have a, a venom in them that's extremely painful. If, it, if a human ever gets um, hit with one of these, uh, it's like excruciatingly painful. It can kill other smaller mammals as well. And platypus have very, very tiny eggs that the female, after fertilization, female releases a tiny little egg about the size of a dime, even smaller. It hatches into live young. And then often those young, they need to be nursed for a while until they actually are independent. Here are two tiny little newborn um, platypus on the mother. They have just been born. So they're going to stay in very close proximity, probably attached to the mother, nursing, taking in milk, getting the energy to develop. So the other, um, the other monotreme is the spiny anteater, called the echidna. And the echidna is, uh, in, this is uh, a relatively young, before the spines have developed. When they're adult, they look kind of like a porcupine, but they have this long snout that they use for um, sort of eating insects. That really long tongue that they can force down into a little insect hiding area. The second group are the marsupials, and these are you're probably more familiar with. What, what makes a marsupial different from uh, the main group of mammals we're about to talk about. Sean? Uh, they have like pouches for nursing young. Yeah, so they, so marsupials give birth to live young, but extremely immature live young. Very, very tiny, immature young that basically just are born, crawl into the pouch, and then stay there to finish their development while they nurse. So, some of these you're familiar with, Australian mammals, like the kangaroo, the koala. Are there any around here? Marsupials? Possums? Is that yeah, a possum is a marsupial that lives in North America. Some people have been confused by this statement. There are more than one opossum in New York State. But the opossum is the only marsupial in New York State, the only species of them. So this is a newborn marsupial. It's probably a kangaroo. Smaller than a penny. Tiny little pink, no fur. They don't even have hind legs. Gelatin. Looks like, yeah, a gummy bear. <laughs> and basically, from this stage, they're born, and then crawl into the pouch and stay there. And they can stay there for a long time, nursing, growing, developing, until eventually they're independent and are able to come out of the pouch. Even after they emerge from the pouch, it's not like being born. They go back and forth for a while until they are completely independent of the mother. What's that? Oh, oh. What's this one? Bearcat. What? Bearcat. Wombat. Wombat. Yeah, I was close. They always What's that? Possible. That's impossible. You see them around here, they're, they're nocturnal, so we don't see them around too much walking around. You do sometimes see them um, as rodeo. Those are going to hit my car. Uh, it's just sort of like a, another adaptation that they evolve sort of separately from the placental mammals. So it just is a pathway they happen to take. It's not really necessarily more beneficial than placental mammals, just different. Aren't koalas like super the, the stinky? Young the Tasmanian devil. Tasmanian devil, yeah. Alright, so... I'll show you this quick video. It's of a kangaroo birth. I definitely need to see this. I actually need to see this. 
give birth. Marsupials give birth to tiny little immature offspring, which it's basically they just go about their business. You'll see in the video, the young is born, then crawls into the pouch. With placental mammals, it's a little bit more intense for the, the female. More independent. All right, our last group to talk about are the placental mammals. And this is the largest group of mammals. Probably the vast majority of the mammals you're familiar with are placental mammals. We are placental mammals. So placental mammals, the young develop inside of the, the mother and to a larger uh, maturity than the marsupials. And so in placental mammals, which are 95% of the mammals that have been identified, the embryo and the fetus are attached to an organ called the placenta. What is the function of the placenta? Any idea? Ali? No? Not, not to push up, did you? Yeah, the, the placenta is where nutrients, oxygen, waste can diffuse back and forth between the mother and the fetus. So connected to the embryo and the placenta is the umbilical cord. And so the placenta has in it, it's rich in blood vessels. And what happens is blood from the mother runs right next to blood from the fetus these very thin capillaries from the both the mother and the fetus in the placenta material can diffuse back and forth so the fetus growing inside of the womb never needs to breathe it never needs to eat it never needs to excrete any waste that's because the mother is doing all of that for it so as the mother's blood goes to the placenta some of the oxygen from the mother diffuse it into blood of the fetus, and that's how it gets oxygen, so it doesn't breathe. Nutrients from the mother's blood diffuse into blood of the fetus, and it doesn't need to eat anything. Waste material from the fetus diffuses into the mother's blood, and then she can excrete it with her kidneys and with her lungs, so it doesn't need to get rid of any waste. So everything that the fetus needs and needs to get rid of is provided for by the mother because of this diffusion of blood. But the mother's blood doesn't actually go into the fetus. The blood supplies are completely separate, but in the placenta, they're right next to each other. And that's how that exchange of material happens. So again, you see placenta connected the umbilical cord to the fetus. The umbilical cord is, contains blood vessels that contain the arteries and veins for the fetus. Where does the umbilical cord connect? Yeah, your belly button is the scar left over from where your umbilical cord brought blood back and forth to the placenta while you were developing. Here is the placenta. It forms in the wall of the uterus. And actually, after the baby's born, this placenta detaches from the wall of the uterus, and that comes out after the baby's born. That's what it actually looks like. With the heart in the yeah. center. Of <laughs> Somebody definitely posted it on Instagram. That's oh, kind of so like gray. It's such gray matter. So that's all of this. Are like these blood vessels? Um, so like the placenta comes out after, like I was in when all my daughters were born. Not the placenta. After baby. the baby was born, the placenta comes out. You can see it. it. Just looks like a bunch of blood vessels and stuff. Um, do you know? Uh, I should, probably shouldn't say this. Do you know? Well, 
So some in some people's cultures or some people choose you know, no, eat, yeah, to no, do it with the eat it, cook and eat it. <gasps> what is the Kardashian? I don't know. Don't tell me that they did that. Yeah, yeah. No. Who's the one that has kids? Oh. All of them. I don't know. Well, Google it, or maybe you shouldn't Google it. But anyway, one of them did cooking the placenta after their child was born. Some people take it home and plant it underneath the tree. Plant it. I mean, put, bury it, and then like provides nutrients for the tree. <laughs> 